Hello guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to be teaching you how you can make a YouTube thumbnail for your YouTube videos. Obviously not all people have Photoshop so I should be making a non uh, Photoshop tutorial on how to make thumbnails as well as just hit that thumbs up button so I know you want a tutorial on that. So yeah, hopefully you guys do enjoy the rest of this video. Um, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go into Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CS6, but even like CS2 would work. Um, they're very similar, so it doesn't really matter what version of Photoshop you have. I'm going to start it off by pressing File New here. This will open up the project settings, and you want to copy down every single setting of these, so make sure it matches mine. You can pause the video right now, or I can explain it right now. So it's 920 by 1080, which is a full HD image. Make sure it's set as pixels and not anything else for the unit measurement. Um, RGB color mode, if you add grayscale, everything you do is going to be black and white, so make sure it's RGB. And make sure the background content is transparent because that's very important, especially when you want to blend backgrounds and stuff like that. Once you've done that, press OK and it should appear like this. And this is going to be your thumbnail and this is going to be the canvas you're working on. Obviously, it's going to look uh, like 50 times better when I teach you how to actually like make a really good one. But usually, I try to find a background first, so I'm going to do that right now. Um, I use a bunch of backgrounds and a bunch of texture packs and stuff like that um, to complete one thumbnail. It takes a bunch of time, but I'm going to like kind of go through it really quickly now, so pay attention. I go on BrushEasy.com a bunch because they have a bunch of wallpapers and, and Photoshop brushes and uh, like patterns and stuff like that. And textures, I use a bunch of textures and most of them are free. There is a premium um, version, so if you want to um, upgrade to that plan, there's even more. So um, it's up to you, obviously. But most of the stuff on this website is still free. So I'm going to search up abstract here. And then it should load up. There's like a lot of them. There's lens flares. There's like a lot. I love the variety of um, options you can really get from this website. So I actually like this one, this um, purple, this little abstract background here. I'm going to press free download. Um, you can log into Brush Easy if you're a premium member. Or you can just press no, just download right now. And then it will um, load up with three seconds. And then here it is. And it should be in this um, pack right here. And once you open it, um, there should be the wallpaper in it. So actually, I just found out that this is not a wallpaper. This is actually a brush. Um, but that's cool too because I'll teach you how to do this right now. You just want to open it up and drag it onto your desktop here. I already have one from like Star and Field, um, Star Field brushes. And basically, when I go into your Photoshop here, you want to press on the brush tool, go on to settings, and then you want to load brushes and select the one so here it is this one's not compatible but the previous one i used um the star one is compatible so you can see that this one works and there it is that looks really cool in my opinion um so brushes can do a bunch um just the one that i used isn't compatible but there are like 100 other ones that you can use so i'm just going to actually use this by just saving the image instead of actually downloading the brush pack I'm going to press file place. Yours might see something a little different like file place embedded or file place linked if you're using a different version of Photoshop than me. But essentially you'll end up with the same result so it's alright. And here let me just hold shift and drag. And press control A. And to center it you want to press um, the move tool here. You want to press layer. Align layers to selection and vertical and horizontal centers. And there it is. So now what I usually do is add the text. I add it in the bottom left or bottom right corners just to make it look cleaner and so it doesn't block out the image that I'm going to add later on. So usually I use a very thin font, maybe like steel tongs next to light. Um, it looks really cool and I usually space them out a bunch. So how you can do this um, is actually like, let me just type how to make, make this white and make it steel tongs here. Um, what I do is actually just like make it a little bit bigger here so I can see it. I'm going to highlight the text, press Control T, and then move this VA. I'm not sure what it stands for. If you do know what it stands for, you want to help people out, um, you can do that. But it basically spreads out the text and it tracks it, I guess, and it increases the tracking. And now to resize it, press Control T, hold Shift and drag, and then you should be able to resize it. For the main text, I'm going to be using Nexa Bold. And the reason I use it is because it looks really clean. It's it's like a very clean font. I just I just like it for some reason. There's also Nexa Light that you can use. I actually have an entire video on uh, my favorite font. So if you want it, it'll be in the card up above in the description below. So here I'm just gonna like try to hold shift and drag until I see that it lines up with the top text above. 
And what I like to do once I'm done that is actually center both of these texts. So I'll press control and highlight both of these. So you want to press control on them individually, press control A, layer, and then align vertical layers, vertical centers. Well, not vertical centers, actually, it's um, horizontal centers. Um, align layers, horizontal centers, and there it is. Press control D, and then now you just want to put it back into the corner, and now it's aligned, and now it looks really clean. The next thing you do is actually change one of the fonts to a color that's similar to the background, this is my opinion. But I just like the outcome of it when it's like two different colors instead of just both white. So I'm going to be doing blue here because um, it kind of matches the background. And now what I like to do is go into blending options. So right click on the text layer, press blending options and go to gradients, lower it a bit. And um, I'm going to be selecting like 30 or 40. That's usually the ideal um, opacity. Go into inner glow and you just want to make it a lighter version of like the font, the color you chose. So I'm going to do light blue. If you do red, make it like pink. It's really self-explanatory. I'm also going to add a drop shadow here. I'm going to make it 0, 22, 22. Obviously, you can change it up a bit, but I just like it like this. Um, opacity is 100, distance is 0, spread is 22, size is 22. Press OK. And now I'm going to do the same thing to how to make. So plenty of options. Gradient, lower it a bit. The inner glow now, so I'm going to get white because it's gray right there. And another cool thing you can do that is not mandatory, it, it really is your opinion. You can uh, duplicate this layer, so I'll right click and duplicate. And then you want to press control and the up arrow and it will move it up. But it'll keep like the, I guess, the vertical stance. So you can move it up and up and up. It's still aligned, but it isn't actually on the same text or like the same area now. And I actually learned this from Zayovo, so shout out to him. It makes it look 3D. It looks really cool now. We're going to do the same thing to the upper text. Press Ctrl J. It's another, another way you can do it. Another way to duplicate it and just up arrow. And now you can see it looks really cool. And now what I'm going to do is group all the text together. So press Ctrl, 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 and Ctrl G. You can also add a bigger drop shadow in the background. The reason you want to do this is because um, it kind of doesn't really look cool, I guess. Um, it looks a lot better when the text is more visible and by adding a bigger drop shadow, it looks a lot better like that. So I'm actually going to select my brush here and select soft round and make the brush size, I guess, like 1,200. That would be ideal. And then just one, two, that's it. I'm going to zoom out. If it's too dark, you can lower the opacity and if it looks like too unnatural in that area, maybe it's too dark compared to the other um, like parts of the thumbnail, you can press Ctrl T to resize and just like make it a little bit bigger. So it actually fades in naturally with the other colors. So now that I'm done talking about the text now, I'm going to go back to the background part of things and teach you what I do with um, textures and stuff like that. So let me just like delete this, go back here. And I'm going to search up stuff like, um, let's actually go to the main page here. There's a bunch of them. So there's like patterns and there's textures here. So I'm going to use this one stars or maybe like clouds, this brick thingy. I don't know what that is. And yeah, that looks cool. There's also this, this looks really cool as well. Yeah. I'm going to download that as well. So free download. I'm actually just going to be quicker here and just like save it right here. And let's just save it. I want to go to file place here. And then I want to place the image here. Obviously the image is not the same color as the actual background. So what I want to do is just make it black and white and control control and then merge them by pressing control E. And that doesn't look natural either. Like it just blocked out the entire background. What the hell am I doing? Um, you can easily change that by pressing um, under the adjustments there. There's like a bunch of layer styles. You can like soft light. Um, linear dodge add. I'm going to be doing soft light because that looks cool. I'm going to add different wallpapers now. I mean different textures and maybe like this one. This one looks really cool in my opinion. I'm going to make it black and white as well in a couple of seconds here. So under the adjustments tab, there's black and white. Control, control, control E. Maybe add linear dodge. Um, soft light. Maybe screen. Um, yeah, screen looks good. Maybe with like less opaque, 
something like that looks really cool. I'm gonna move it to the bottom here. I'm also gonna add the last wallpaper, I believe. Is that the last one? No, there's one more. Just stars as well. So stars actually make it look really cool if you can find a perfect star wallpaper. Um, they, they make it look really cool. So maybe like that, or maybe Liner Dodge. It looks really cool as well. File place. And I'm gonna add the last one, with this, which is the clouds. And since it's the same color as blue, I'm gonna just keep it the same. I'm not gonna make it like black and white. And as you can see, it looks weird kind of. Um, You might like it, but obviously you can like merge in more simpler backgrounds like stripes instead of uh, stripes and stars instead of like like bricks and stuff um, it just looks really cool in my opinion like this and since it's a bit too bright i'm gonna lower the brightness by pressing brightness and contrast and lowering the brightness so it looks a lot better like that as well and if you want to change the color of the entire thing so maybe you want to change the background and the text color without like actually changing it you can press create a new hue and saturation adjustments layer and then you can change the entire thing like that so maybe like that, that looks really cool in my opinion. Um, that, I like that one, so I'm gonna keep it like that, just because it looks so cool. It looks like that's kind of like a forest, I guess. And it looks nice like that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add lighting to this entire thing. Um, lighting, like why would you add lighting to a, a thumbnail? That looks really, it sounds really, really weird, right? Um, but it really isn't. I got into graphic design just like a couple months ago and I found out that lighting is a very important part of making good graphics. So usually what people do is just add a new layer on top of all the other layers and add white, select white and select the brush here. So the same um, same settings here, zoom out a bit. And then they usually just add one at the top right here, just like one click and then one near the font right here, so like something right here or near the text and then one just random, just random. And then they lower the opacity and it just looks cooler like that. Like just look like that compared to that. It's just like, it gives it a more professional look and it just looks a lot better. They also sometimes like add a different color. So maybe like a darker version of green here, or maybe let's add blue. Let's add blue in here, like turquoise, I guess. And then they just add a random part right here. Like just a random, just random. And so it just looks cool because it looks a lot more natural like that. Move it under the text layers, which is right here. And then I actually just want to change this back to blue since I'm like, I guess um this, thingy um the hue and saturation layer actually change it a bit so here press ctrl e i actually want to just lower the pc as well here and now I, I guess it looks a lot better just look at this compared to this it's a lot more dull like that like without this color and it looks a lot better like that i do that with a bunch of my thumbnails now and i, I see that a lot of you guys enjoy it a lot more now Another thing I like to do is add lightning in the background. I know it's like lightning. Um, you just search up lightning in this and then there's like a bunch of them. Like as you can see, look how many lightning brushes there are. Just like look at it. Right here, I'm not actually gonna go to the brush packs and stuff. I'm actually just gonna find an image of lightning. Try to find it. Maybe like um, this one, this one. It has text on it obviously, but I'm just gonna try to do it. So file place and then place it here. And what people do, like usually like, um, I believe FIFA YouTubers, all this is all they do. They go on normal and linear dodge end. And then it's like that. That's what they do. And it looks so cool. I just love the look of it. So um, I do that a bunch now. Obviously you can see that lightning is still appearing. So you can go on Google or something or look through on um, brush easy a lot more and more thoroughly to find them. But as you can see, it looks really cool like that. So something like that, you can see lightning. It's really cool. I love lightning and stars, especially the ones I find on Brush Easy. There's there's a bunch of them. And now the final thing to do is add an image. So something that relating with everything here. So video, YouTube, uh, thumbnails. That's what you want to do. But since, as you can see, like what am I supposed to search up a thumb and a nail? I'm not going to do that. So I'm actually going to search up video PNG on here. And I'm going to also put a YouTube logo and then I'm gonna save it. The reason it isn't on Brush Easy cause those are non copyrighted photos so you can use them. Um, but obviously a YouTube logo is um, not non copyrighted since like someone owns it, right? So like, yeah, you can use it. <laughs> and here, let me just place this image here. I'm gonna add a gradient overlay to this one as well just to add a cooler look. I'm gonna add inner glow as well. So maybe like a green. 
actually since there's a hue and saturation layer what you can do is just find the color that's green I guess maybe like move down maybe blue I think blue equals green in this thing yeah it's green um, and then you can also add an outer glow which is blue and then it'll turn green and as you can see it looks really cool like that um, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do like at a YouTube logo but I won't do that um, after I've done that, I usually actually add another wallpaper, um, not an actual HD, like real life image. So, uh, maybe like, oh, let's just think about this. Why does it say Tiago Silva? What the hell? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go and search like laptop, like MacBook HD since it has to do with video, right? And video editing. So I'm just going to take this one. going to save it here. I'm going to press file place. And then I'm gonna move it to the bottom here. And since it's purple, as you can see, I'm gonna find a hue and saturation that fits to where it turns green. So right there, press Control E, and merge them. And now what I'm gonna do is lower the opacity of this, so you kind of see it. I'm gonna move it under the video icon there, right here. You can see the laptop and the actual video thingy, but the video thing is a lot more visible, I guess, and it looks a lot better like that. And the final thing I do is mess around with the adjustments is very important. So I'll maybe like increase the brightness a bit like that. Lower the contrast. It's up to you. Like it really is up to you on how you like your thumbnails. Maybe you want like it soft contrast rather than a bunch of color. Um, I, I really like a bunch of color. So maybe like that. Uh, the more you do it, the better you get at it. So like I'm not totally good at this, but I think I've, I've done enough graphic design that I'm decent. And then I usually use the top four, not the top five on this, on the adjustments tab right here, I, and hue and saturation. I don't use anything more than that because I don't know how to use other ones. So something like that. And then hue and saturation, you can change the color in the end. Maybe you like that better. That actually looks really cool in my opinion. Something like that. See, you can like choose your colors. Like that looks really cool. I love the orange. And in case you like the orange, but you don't like the text anymore, and you want to change the text you can easily do that by just finding the text right here so it's in this group and then you just change it to orange wherever orange is so something like that and then you can press ctrl e on the text with the huge saturation layer and you can see like that that's like very good um that's what i call a really good thumbnail right there and hopefully you guys enjoy this video i know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this for a long time and in previous videos i've rushed through it because i don't know why but I've tried to um, make it a little bit longer for you guys to understand it a lot more. So if you guys did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up button. My name is Steven. I'll see you in the next one.